You're now listening to the Something Good Podcast Network. Please press any key to continue. It's 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 pretty cool when you're when you see someone like Guy Fieri, like he is a fucking cartoon character, but he god is. damn, he knows he's it. a good guy. Yeah, you know, uh, unlike like, unlike the evil Guy Fieri, the evil Guy Fieri. <laughs> Look that up, everyone. <laughs> EvilGuyFieri.com. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of the Couch Potatoes. <laughs> I'm Alex. This is Cap Morrison. And after we took last week off, we decided to just roll with something good for you, and we hung out and just chilled some. We did a big rock fight. So, guys, go just listen back that to that. There's yeah. a whole lot of content. Knock there down, for you. drag out, bloodbath. <laughs> oh yeah, which. Oddly enough, that's, I that's won. A, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a pretty good segue, actually, because oddly enough, sometime within the mid, what would you say, mid two thousands during the writer strike. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I know. And this says uh, back this, when content was being made. This uh, and then they said, "Fuck it, I'm not getting paid enough, so make your own goddamn content." Yeah, <laughs> this ongoing series of like everything we watched as we were growing up, starting yeah. with uh, Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon, and then Comedy Central, and yeah. then everything else in our preteens, and now we are getting a little older, and uh, yeah. uh-huh. networks are uh, cables expanding, you know, and uh, new things are being started. And I would say overall, and ruining society. Yes, because actually that that's a pretty good way of looking at it too. We have kind of done done that um I, def- I don't think that was really a conscious thing that we've done but no, it's, it's I pretty, of that. <laughs> that is really interesting though so let's kind of go through that so as we were growing up tv oh no it almost kind of had a special charm to it like yeah. there was something awesome about like oh it's time to watch some tv well, you know it was it was like quality content yeah you know you would take a show like and this is you know it doesn't age well but like the cosby show <laughs> I mean, the of Cosby, all you, pools, Chris, but, but that's like, the it, one it, you wanted to go with. <laughs> name me another show that had a family unit, a full family unit that worked. Family matters. This is true. Family matters. Okay. For like once, one then or two Then it became seasons. the Urkel fucking exactly. show. <laughs> the Cosby show was about the Cosbys. Yeah, you know, the, yeah I know what you mean. Or you the Huxtables. The Huxtables. So you had two parents. Yeah. Four kids. And everything was fine. Yeah. Same with like shows like Home Improvement. Mm-hmm. And and those are few and far between. If you think about it real hard, a, a show with two full parents, original parents, yeah. it was hard to find. With that many, with like three or well, four parental kids. Parental figures or specifically so mom specific, and dad? So specifically biological parents. Okay, because I was so, going to say so Fresh take, Prince. Yeah, the Fresh Prince. But his he had an adoptive family. Yeah. It was his aunt and uncle, mainly his, pater, uh, his maternal aunt mm-hmm. and uncle. So... Like Uncle Phil wasn't really his uncle; it was his his, his father, his figure. aunt's his aunt's husband. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's, <laughs> yeah, not yeah. Blo- it's not a blood relative, and that's what made that show even better because Uncle Phil came from Philly. Mm-hmm. That was the cool thing about that. But he told him he's like, "No, man, I got the fuck out of there because it was a terrible goddamn place." You know, I didn't just come to fucking Bel, uh, Bel- Air. I didn't just come to fucking Hollywood. No, I worked my way here, and you got here. But you deserve to be here too, mm-hmm. um, and that was like, that was the quality of that show. But uh, other shows where either like Andy Griffith, yeah, Andy Griffith has a great fucking point of view on this because the mom's gone. Yeah, there is no mom. Brady Bunch, she's got three kids. He's got three kids. They decide to fuck, and guess what? Now they're together. <laughs> now you have six goddamn kids. Three of them are your step kids. Yeah, and that is awkward as shit. Yeah, because now. Now, in the 70s, you can work at McDonald's and have a seven-bedroom house. <laughs> but, 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 but now, that that is unfeasible. Oh, yeah. 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 If you like, work at McDonald's, you literally are working there just to have the luxury of being able to work. Yeah. So, yeah. so another one is uh, a kind of a knockoff of the Brady Bunch was Step by Step. You remember that show? I never watched Step by Step. I was going to say, we, fucking, all, we ought to do an old TV land, quote-unquote, yeah, episode same at some fucking, point. Same fucking premise. 
One, uh, one woman, she had an older son, daughter, and a boy. The other guy had the reverse. Right. All right. It, it's just this mishmash bullshit. Uh, you go even further back to um, around the 80s, you had um, growing pains. Growing they, pains. They adopted, yes. they adopted kids. Um, See, then you got the reverse of like everybody is working as a family family unit in shows like fucking uh, Everybody Loves Raymond, where they all hate each other. Yeah. But Everybody Loves Raymond. Uh, has a campiness to it. True. For someone like Ray Romano. Cause and King of the, Queens was still good, yeah, too. So, but they didn't have kids. I thought they did. No, King of Queens, they never had kids. I don't remember just, that. I never watched King, King, King of Queens. King, King of Queens is a spinoff of Everybody Loves Raymond. That's what people don't realize. That's right. Because, because Kevin James, Kevin James was, was the, his uh, friend. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, uh, but no, Kevin, uh, King of Queens, they never had kids. It was They were just a couple who didn't have kids. The dad lived with them. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. So, like, a, a, there weren't many shows with a strong family unit since the 50s. Right. All right. Because you had Leave It to Beaver and stuff like that. But, like, but as when the you mid, had, late 90s yeah. came around, post Seinfeld, you had, you know, the anti heroes. You had, like, the anti, you know, uh, you know, I guess more grounded in reality kind of like family dynamics and stuff like yeah, that. And then, then with even, the campiness, but like even you mentioned with, you know, too. the grounded in reality shows, uh, you can nitpick every fucking show to death. Of course. You can. It's still entertainment. And yeah, it's still a sitcom, a situational comedy. Seinfeld was one of the first to do just adults. Yeah. Just adults. No kids. It was just people who lived in some apartments who happened to get together for breakfast, lunch, whatever the fuck, and hang out. Yeah. And each and one talk had, about nothing. And talk about nothing. That's the show. Welcome but to that, they, the first podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but each of, them, each of them had a very unique stance. And what was cool about the Seinfeld show, and I will say I don't like the show, but what was cool was the secondary characters. The like, secondary characters. Like, like, like right, Newman. Like Newman or uh, like... Uh, uh, let's see, uh, like Soup Nazi and all these other, yeah. like you know, uh, little B characters mm-hmm. that would that they were just called like the such and such. It's like what happens in Always Sunday, uh, Always Sunny, when it's where uh, the one character is just always the Sunday waitress, sounds like a weird Irish version. It is. It's <laughs> <That's> exactly <laughs> it's what always, Protestants. That's exactly <laughs> what uh, Always Sunny is. It's just uh, you know a Philadelphia version of Seinfeld. Uh, we, we'll get to it eventually, but I just watched one of the newer episodes and I about cried. Oh Why? yeah, we we really do need to finish and start <laughs> or pick up our retrospective on that again. Uh, we really need to. But no, it's. What was weird was during the writer's strike, you had, um, so like up to the point, let's say the 90s, mm-hmm. you had Full House. Yeah. No mom. Yep. A fucking, and you had your brother and his wife and their two kids living in the basement. I don't know if you remember fucking that part. weird. Yeah. The other brother was living there. Uh, Bob Saget had three girls. Yeah. <laughs> One of them was a twin that would just get passed around. <laughs> um and you had a weird like R. latchkey R. kid. Zagat. You had a weird latchkey kid that would always come over and hang out, basically live there, eat all their food. <laughs> but, yeah, a weird dynamic in, uh, in yeah. that show too. But like those shows aren't about strong family values; they're about extended family values, right? You know, because you can build your family. You know, mm-hmm. your family isn't just your blood; it's what you make it. You yeah, know, that's that's a great. That was a great thing to have during the post like legal divorce era of the late '60s, '70s. Mm-hmm. So you needed that. So, hey, can this family survive without a mom? Can it survive without a dad? You know, yeah, no, we just extend the family. We expand the unit. Yeah. And it's all about who you're close with and how and they then, take care of you. And then the writers quit. Yep. Because they said, fuck it. We ran out of ideas. It's done. Well, I'd say right before the writers' strike, there was one more anime, aside from animation, because we all know how we feel about King of the Hill. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there was only one live action show that actually really kind of encapsulated what the family dynamic of the late 90s, early 2000s was. And it was Malcolm in the Middle. I was going to say. Yeah. Like that, I think that was actually a really good example the, of family dy- dynamic because so, w- did they get along all the time? Hell no. Did Were there constantly fighting and problems? Yes. But you know what? I can't remember, and now I'm not a big Malcolm in the Middle scholar. I mm-hmm. watched it when it aired and caught a few reruns, but in no clips I've seen online and anything else, has the family ever not had each other's backs? I yeah. say maybe, brain- maybe the brothers will kind of conspire against each other. But just brothers. Yes, but at the end of the day... They're still there for each other. I want to say the Bernie Mac show was kind of like that too. The Bernie Mac, those weren't his kids; those are his sisters. Yep. That's right. Yep. And even like he did the whole special about that. His old comedy special was built 
for the that, for the that TV scene. show. Yeah, so he pitched that whole bit he does about mm-hmm. wearing his sister's kids about this little girl looked me up and down like she's gonna whoop my ass. Like you little bitch. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> but they talk the about his, the ballsiness of this little girl, like looking him up and down. And Big Mac's not a small man. No. no. <laughs> so like it, it's, it's it's very fucked up to watch. But you know, Malcolm in the Middle was part of a set of sitcoms about real real lower middle class people like mm-hmm. Roseanne came out in the er, uh, late 80s early 90s same thing three plus kids Malcolm Middle four boys one was sent off one's not, not there all the time because yep. you you know why mm-hmm. because if all four boys worked together they'd be the Taliban <laughs> 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 they'd be the fucking Al Qaeda the ISIS of fucking Main Street okay? yeah. <laughs> because if you remember watching some of those episodes when all four of them are together monsters oh yeah because yeah. there were a good handful of episodes where the oldest would come home for mm-hmm. vacation and or whatever like, a cool thing about Malcolm in the Middle as opposed to like Roseanne was the kids they 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 saw the abilities of these kids uh, Malcolm was just naturally smart. Dewey was constructive. You know, mm-hmm. he he had a knack for building stuff and being kind of a little a little dark. Yeah, um, Cyn- cynical. But Reese, Reese, the older one, he was intuitive out the gate. Um, now Reese was the third, uh, was the second oldest, right? Yes. Reese also could cook. Mm-hmm. He could understand, like he couldn't do math for shit, but he could understand what it took. What, how, he, he was a prime example of like ADHD yeah. because he would burn shit. He would get into a lot of trouble until you found him or until you gave him something to do. If he found something he liked doing, he could completely pour himself mm-hmm. into it. Like you said, cooking. There was like a whole, like a two or three episode string of like he was actually a good kid for a minute mm-hmm. because he found cooking. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have shows like uh, Roseanne. So Roseanne, you know, the oldest daughter is kind of a bitch. She's the oldest one. Uh, and she leaves home. She finds a guy, leaves. And the second daughter, the middle child, ends up having a boyfriend. And they move him in. Think about how, like, in the early 80s, how that would have flew. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to let my girlfriend's boyfriend live with us in the same house. That's Yeah. That's fucking weird, right? That's, that's weird now. <laughs> I was going to say, any time period, that's not But it happens. And, yeah. like, that, that was the cool thing about Michael in the Middle and Roseanne was, oh, no, this shit's real. Like, you do end up making kind of excuses to do weird shit. Yeah. And, and like, the nuclear unit of the family doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Just to keep it, or just do anything to keep it together mm-hmm. somehow, you know? But, you, you know, now, now we have shows like Modern Family, um, of uh, that ilk, yeah, yeah that, which is a, that, just the evolution of the family dynamic. Yeah, yeah, because now it's the expanded family. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's still a family unit. You know, it's still a mom and dad in the core base and their kids. Uh, Bernie Mac brought it back a little bit, even though they're adoptive kids. Yeah, uh, a great version of this is Titus. Yes, because I now Titus. it's we talked about that a little bit now, on our. What was the dynamic of Titus? The mom is gone. Mm-hmm. The dad owns the house. It's Titus's house technically, but him. His single father and his defunct brother all live in the same house. <laughs> yep, <laughs> and it's like what? That's another dynamic that you can't really write. Oh, and grounded for life. Grounded for life. I love that show so much. <laughs> I remember one scene they put. They thought the kid, the kid was pretending to be possessed. Yeah, and the uncle was like. The power of Christ compels you. He dips his fingers in his glass and throws it in him. And he's like, oh, my God, it burns. He's like, oh, my God, is that holy water? He's like, no, it's vodka. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that was another one where it was an extended, expanded family because the uncle lived with them. And the grandpa. Well the, the, well, the grandpa lived with them. The uncle just basically half-assed lived there. Yeah, he was like a latchkey kid almost. Yeah. <laughs> but... You know, but, but it's kind of important that we're talking about all of this because when the writer strike happened, they decided, okay... Those crazy scenarios that we've been scripting that you know is fake, what if they were actually real? Yeah. And all of a sudden, reality TV was born kind of out of that, trying to be the maybe the next evolution yeah. of the family dynamic of, okay, we're showing you more and more real. Let's just show you reality. Well, a great example of this is, let me, let me explain the synopsis of something. You tell me whether it's a sitcom or a fucking reality show. <laughs> People on an island... They're trying to fight their way to get off the island. There's one last guy. He may be gay. End. <laughs> That's either Survivor or Gilligan's Island. Both. It's the plot of both. All right? This is literally the plot of both. Yeah. Stranded individuals who suck and hate each other are trying to get off an island and survive. And the last guy leaving is a gay guy. <laughs> And that's the whole first season of Survivor. Yep. But, like, you got to think about how Survivor was. You know, it wasn't like the MTV big... Uh, it wasn't like 
um, uh, what is it? Well, the real life or something like that. Surreal life or no, Big Brother or the one that's kind of like Big Brother where they all live in a house. Surreal life. No, real, world. Celebrities? real world. Real world. Real that's world. That's right. MTV brought that out. Yeah, and it's like, hey, let's get some young adults. Different backgrounds, just mm-hmm. putting together. And you, if you think about it, it's one of those weird social construct tests it, that, that psychiatrists do. <laughs> See, that was kind of like the whole thing with like the late nineties, early two thousands, particularly with MTV mm-hmm. and uh, you know the Big Brother era of like you know early reality TV. And because like Big that. Brother and Survivor came out relatively the same time, mm-hmm. uh, but MTV, you know, with Jackass, and it was very, very teen oriented. So you didn't want to give it a sitcom, you know. Yeah, you want to give them something they can react to, like Headbangers Ball or something yeah, like that. Right, right. Like, um, but uh, but you brought up a good point, reactionary, and that's what uh, Jackass was. It's just us as the yeah. viewer reacting to what you they're know. Doing stunts, yeah, and doing us stunts, reacting to it, and they're and they're not stunt stunt men. No. no, they are very unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where I think Johnny Doxville said, literally said his dick doesn't work. <laughs> like, yeah, like uh, he broke his urethra or yeah, some he shit broke like it. that. <laughs> uh, like, think about that. It's a fleshy organ. You broke it. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> how many times did you hit it against a concrete before you realized you broke it? Uh, He's but, trying to hammer a nail. <laughs> yeah, I bet he did too. <laughs> but uh, but when you take like the real world, you know, and any really like reality show it is a psychological test and a war crime technically if it was real it's like we're oh, watching, yeah it's like we're watching mk ultra experiments yeah, or some is. shit the only thing is it is without the drugs it is scripted because you got to remember it is a produced show um because we can't let it get too violent no mm-hmm. because you know when you get three guys and three girls in a fucking situation one girl's gonna fuck both of them or one guy's gonna fuck another dude and it's gonna get weird as fuck in there they're gonna fight at some point yeah and it's gonna be fucking terrible somebody's gonna say the n-word like it's, it's, it's gonna get fucking worse <laughs> that was the real world one, some, it someone's gonna get caught a cunt in the middle of dinner and they're just like I'm gonna fucking stab you with a yeah. fucking pizza cutter you know but that's how the, that's, that's the real world right there brother yeah. like, welcome to the new family dynamic yeah. and, but then you know that evolves into shows where all right let's do survival based mm-hmm. and up to this point up to this point all survival stuff that we knew came from stories of backpackers and stuff like that who didn't have a platform before youtube none of these people really had a platform except for writing survival books nature guides and shit like that uh so let's put some laymans some people who don't camp don't do dick and put them on an island yep. all right now in the beginning, you think, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. In the beginning. And, yeah, yeah, that's a cool idea, you know? They're going to do some wacky fucking tests and shit. But, you know, we're going to see what it's like to really rough it, you know, from the some city. Some Lord of the Flies shit's totally yeah. not going to happen. <laughs> well, for adults, no. But for kids, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's true for kids. Kids are animals. Don't make up a religion just to justify their actions. <laughs> adults, however, they have a base. Mm-hmm. They'll beat you with a rock and say God told them to do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Especially if they're not... Uh, in a situation they're familiar with and stuff like that is change. But you know, I'm sorry, I love but that. you They'll have beat to you with a rock. <laughs> but you have to have limits because the first pitch, the first pitch of Survivor is good, right? I would right. love to see a boardroom meeting. All right, guys, we have this little island. It may have been owned by a pedophile. Like, <laughs> But this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna block off this beach. Who do you think funded this? <laughs> I bet if you go back to Survivor, I bet you find that fucking name on there. Yes. <laughs> anyway, going back to the non, you know, Anunnaki bullshit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Operation Edikit. <laughs> we, 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 we will get there, Chris. We yeah. will get there. But like, just imagine the pitch of, hey, we're gonna take twelve. 12 people 12 maybe relatively city people that yeah but like know, that live people who don't rough it you yeah. know uh, we're gonna put them on an island quotes yeah and we're gonna see what happens and every every week they're gonna vote one person off the island and just to make it cool we'll fucking give the last guy a million bucks yeah a just cool to meal the deal just a cool meal you know that, t- a TV million yeah a TV million which is like Five hundred thousand after taxes. like seven hundred fifty thousand, and maybe a car. Yeah, <laughs> just to make sure you, <laughs> that pay you have taxes. to. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yep. <laughs> um, but, but here's the fucked up thing. So you're like, talking about that that pitch. Yeah. After the we can, we're just keep it in the circle. After the success of Survivor, imagine being in the boardroom and guy walks in with a stack of papers and he goes, "All right, guys, we've had maybe five successful seasons of Survivor." We, we've even had maybe one or two spinoffs and specials. It's going mm-hmm. really good. Hear me out. 
we have an old Warner Brothers lot that was used for like a lot of like westerns mm-hmm. and old movies like that. It, it's really run down. We haven't used it in forever, and it's like on the outskirts of like our shit. Like it's fucking far away. It's dude. like Spawn Ranch. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> what if we did? I found this little thirty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> what if we did like Survivor? with like a bunch of kids and we just dropped them off over there and told them to build their own civilization. Oh, I remember this. And the fucking CEO slams his fist on them, does a line of coke and says, that's fucking brilliant. <laughs> Meanwhile, the fucking chief operations officer is just like, uh, yeah, I read this book at school. Yes. <laughs> and they all tried to murder each other before the helicopters came and rescued them. <laughs> Yes, they out, that was an actual show called Kid Nation. I Kid remember Nation. this. Uh, so me and Alex know about Kid Nation very yeah. well. But it is Lord of the Flies. <laughs> I remember being in, um, I want to say, seventh grade when I first heard about Kid Nation. Yeah. And we were at Thanksgiving because they broadcasted it during one of the Thanksgiving football games, like a commercial. Yep. And I, I look at my fucking cousin. This grown ass man, he's like, "Wow, that looks, looks that might that might be bad." I'm just like, "Yeah, like Lord of the Flies, bad." Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, "You read that?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's it." <laughs> that's well, right see, here. that was the era in which we were all like watching TV as a family kind mm-hmm. of thing, and our and I don't, I don't remember watching the show. I definitely remember the commercials for yeah, it. Yeah, the commercials were heavy. Yeah, they, they played the commercials all the time, so I definitely remember those. And I remember one time the commercial came on, and my stepdad was just like. Huh? Seems like we need to send your ass there. Yeah. <laughs> oh and I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, a kid version of Survivor. Okay, yeah. that's cool. You know, theirs was a little bit different. They yeah. didn't have a cool meal for the kid waiting at the end of the line. They did though. They had, it was like a it wasn't a million, but it was like a hundred thousand or some yeah. shit, like a gold star or yeah. some shit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, the problem with Kid Nation was the varying ages of the children. The yeah. cool thing about Survivor was they would be they would be between like twenty five and thirty. Yeah. All right. Um, and then you would have you were talking about spinoffs. It would mm-hmm. go to seasons three, four, five, and six. And there's like, hey, you remember Survivor's worst characters on the island? It's just like you get oh, the yeah. worst of the worst, and they would become exactly. It was always the worst of the worst uh, competitors. It'd be like Survivor's was, best of the rest. Every series does this yeah, too yeah, now because they took it from Survivor. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. So yeah, Real World did it after Survivor did it, which was fucking insane. And then you would get uh, the worst of the worst from uh, the romance reality uh, competitions. I, I was holding off on that because that's a whole. Let me, separate let me Pitch this one. Yes. Yeah, let me pitch this one. <laughs> There's a guy, okay, and some women, let's say 30, and each woman has to sign a release stating, oh, yeah, they're going to date this guy for so amount, so amount of time. Quote, unquote, date this and guy. And when you get to a certain point, maybe between you and another woman, you contractually sign that you will take this man to your home, uh, possibly where your parents live. Uh, and possibly have sex with him. And your parents have to agree to this, too. That is insane <laughs> that you have to pitch that. Because you're just like the, da- the daughter who's in her 20s would have to mm-hmm. say, hey, I'm going to go to the sh- I'm gonna try to be on the show to fuck this dude and be a- find a husband. Or uh, the spinoff of that, which is... Uh, the woman. Or like the, uh, no, the other <laughs> yeah. one. No, the other one where dicks, it's like... Dicks, it's, dicks, 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 dicks. <laughs> No, see, or, no, it's the other one where like uh, uh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, Chris was just like throwing his fingers in the air while he was saying dicks, and it made it even better. <laughs> what about the one? Uh, here's the pitch. What if we do this exact same thing as Bachelorette, and we tell all these girls that he's a millionaire? Yeah, Joe Millionaire. Yeah, but when uh, you know the last woman standing finds out or wins, we tell her that he's not a millionaire. In fact, I he's remember lower. This. Yes. In fact, he's broke. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> like, he's, he's I hope broke, you have broke. money, mommy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, no, I'm going to be living with you. <laughs> In your one bedroom apartment. But where Where are we going? <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're, they're bringing that back, actually, which is kind of funny. No. Yeah. So, um, but you could take, you could take uh, a re- you got to remember, they're pulling, they're pulling from actual sitcoms to create these stupid fucking reality mm-hmm. shows. So, what is the bachelorette, bachelorette, or the bachelor, other than the dating game? Yeah, yeah, you're it's right. The fucking dating game with more dicks, <laughs> dicks, 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 and more fights, and more fights. Hell yeah, uh-huh. that's what you want to see. <laughs> if I want to see that, I'll buy a bunch of rabbits and put them in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll just be with- fighting and fucking all day long. Fighting and fucking all day long. That's what we want to see. That's what we need. That's what drives the ratings. Yeah, and then on top of all that. On top of Survivor, The Bachelorette, 
Bachelor, Joe Millionaire, whatever the fuck. Anything that involves so many. Yeah, the real world, all this. They decided to do one more genre. Hey, you all really want to know what housewives think? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was gonna go one step further. Uh, if if we're I would actually you know what? Let's lump that all together into reality family. Okay. Because there was also one in which my family was extremely captivated on. It was all the fucking nanny nine one one. Oh my god! Shows <laughs> with like and, the tyrant kids and uh, the amount of fakeness was in that. Because oh, yeah. um, if you actually like, a lot of those kids are grown now, and they're talking about yeah, no, they were there for like two weeks. And they made me tell my mom I loved her, like in a weird, awkward way. Yeah. And they like just zoomed in the camera on my face, and I was just like, "Are we done now?" <laughs> and like, you can actually look this shit up, like mm-hmm. the actual like screen tests of some of these families. And they're like, "Hey, what's wrong with your son?" Like, "Oh no, he acts up." Like, "How so?" And it's like it'd be some bland shit. Like, yeah. "Oh, he just doesn't pay attention to school. He talks back." It was like, "Okay, yeah, like maybe he's not getting hugged enough or some shit." Like that. That'd be it. And then you got one. He's like, "Oh no, I burnt my fucking teacher's house down. I don't give yeah. a fuck. <laughs> you know, I carry a fucking shiv made of." toothbrush <laughs> well, uh, 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 some of those clips, holy frosted flakes <laughs> some of those clips get uh-huh. recycled back onto uh instagram and tiktok and stuff mm-hmm. and i love the one kid that was like now she trying to take away my bacon that ain't gonna happen i want my bacon now yeah. <laughs> but like you're, you're she coming in my house trying to change things and it was like this little kid with like this heavy country accent just I'm, mad that he couldn't have bacon that sounds hilarious i'm picturing this little eight-year-old little redneck Timmy. I'm gonna pack up and leave so, so you have like you have CBS ABC NBC which NBC was sitcom heavy they were the heavy hitters they had Frasier they had Cheers and then they had Friends and then they kept belching out more bullshit like Mad About You all this Dharma and Greg uh, the other one about the you? gay guy um, Will, uh, and Grace. Will and Grace yep. yeah. uh, so like yeah so they were kicking out content ABC's coming back Fox had the best reality show Cops. <laughs> you tell I me. Was cops. I don't I care. Was Fox. White, black, man, woman, any spectrum on the fucking everybody. Watch anyone fucking cops. can sit here with me, watch cops, and we'll be best fucking friends. <laughs> yes, because when that cop searches that stupid young bitch's car and is like, "Oh, what the fuck is this?" <laughs> and it's like, "It's a bag of heroin." <laughs> Get the fuck off the ground, bitch. Kiss the pavement. <laughs> like, geez, See, and the thing is, it's like there's a drug Santa Claus and an IHOP. We gotta, yes. do we shoot him? <laughs> nah, we got cameras here. We don't shoot him. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's tackle him. Let's tackle him. And taser, taser, taser. I don't care how athletic the cop was. You know, big six foot two, former NF, former fucking uh, football player in college or some shit. And he's like telling his life story. Then from then, like, oh yeah, the streets in the Oklahoma OKC is kind of rough. You know, you know, I've been on the beat for about ten years, and then two seconds later, two fucking seconds later, he is dashing down the goddamn street after some dude. He's like, man, fuck the police! I killed my wife, and it's like he's gone, and he's gone yep. in the dark, and, you, and the whole time, the cop, you know, he's carrying his gun, he's got his vest on, and he's dashing, man, he's gone. This dude carrying a fucking thirty pound camera. Is right there. No, he's catching up, dude. He's oh, yeah, but, but, but that is my favorite part, though. Is that you, <laughs> yes, yeah. you can hear the fucking guy and running. This is like, and this is fucking like 1999, 2000s. So this is a big ass fucking camera. Oh, or yeah. Some shit. I, watched, like I watched the cameraman, cameraman, cameraman out outrun a cop, and he caught the suspect <laughs> before the cop did. And like, you can look at the look, the look on the dude's face because you know they have a side of waiver to show their face, yeah. but he side of mm-hmm. waiver. He's like, man, you're fast. <laughs> <laughs> I love the ones like they're pulling out snakes. Remember when they did yeah. yes. like a giant boa constrictor? Gainesville or Miami. Uh, it's police. always in fucking Florida. <laughs> the Miami Dade cops and the OKC cops were the most. They're soldiers. Yes. They were not cops. Those were fucking soldiers, man. They were against, they were fighting the people. <laughs> the methods. The method. Uh, oh my god! It just like watch cops today, and it's still relatable. Yeah. to watch and, well, and the, the best is, is it, the best theme song of any show. Oh yeah, <laughs> bad boys, bad what boys, you what, what you want, what you want, badass bass line and shit. Uh-huh. You know when you get pulled over, you want to fight Spotify that shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, and that's, and that's the thing is like you know, especially over the last I'd say four to five years, yeah. it's been. A, very very frowned upon because of basically just you know police and cop culture but yeah. it's like i it i feel like everyone still had that moment of watching that and it's like in our era of that was live pd 
Yeah. <laughs> Live PD was cops on steroids because all of a sudden it was cameras following different precincts around and you, like you had a guy like in the, this control room and they're like watching all these feeds and anytime shit would go down they would just clip to a different city and they're like oh shit's going down over here and it could just be a high speed chase and they're like, and then you know they're like okay well you know this seems to be going on for a minute uh so and so is now showing up to this house well, that, that that goes to more of a uh advancement in technology yeah this was all like cops was videotapes people these guys mm-hmm. are sitting in like hey fox check this out and it'd be on the tape and it'd be like meth head stabbed yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> man and wife fight it out in the yard <laughs> or I, I, I do love the domestic violence ones because because <laughs> it's I always that <laughs> it's always a guy be like just sitting on the couch and the cops just burst in and he's just like what yeah. <laughs> and the girl like, like, the girl has like almost no eye <laughs> it's just yeah. like it is darkness <laughs> Mm-hmm. He it's, hit me. No, dude. You, no, you misunder. He's just misunderstood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, bitch, get the pill. Because <laughs> like this has happened before. <laughs> and then uh, like you have shows like that, which pre- uh, uh, predate the the reality shows of uh, Dirty Jobs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, the oh, job, well, hold on. Before we go the into job that. based uh, reality shows, well, well that's more like, informative, if, educational. Really, you would think like your Discovery Channel based. You ones. would think. But, yeah, to, to a point, but it's like it, to stay kind of on the trash era. Yeah, we're talking about trash. We, yeah, we can't we can't talk about a re, we can't have a reality episode and not talk about the biggest trash of all the trash TV. Jerry, 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 See, like, even Jerry. Jerry. But trash TV. That that all right? So now we're talking about but, talk shows. Well, yeah. but that's still a reality. That but he was. What do you even, even call that? Just like not even a show. talk show. Is it's it a, a talk, talk show? show? It's a talk show. So, but it's all scripted though, which is part of the reality TV thing. That's part yeah. of all of this because outside of something like Cops, all these reality TV shows we talk about are scripted. But before Jerry, you had the same fucking thing happen in other talk shows, mm-hmm. like Ricky Lake, um, Sally Jesse, Sally Raphael. Jesse Raphael, um, Oprah, Oprah. When Oprah started, like uh-huh. Bill, Burr, Bill, Burr, Bill Burr has a fucking uh, bit about this. Yeah, but it's like, oh no. She ran that shit from the back, man. She had midgets, fucking postmen and shit. Oh, it was a like, freak it was show. Disgusting. It was a freak show, and she stood on the backs of those midgets. <laughs> and like, she went from interviewing fucking Nazi mailmen <laughs> yeah. to like athletes and yeah. Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah. somehow. <laughs> Same vibe. <laughs> Same vibe. <laughs> but, OJ. OJ. Yeah, the juice. I bet she was friends with the juice. Tell I'll me guarantee she was, it. was it. The juice has lost. <laughs> he is. He, and then like everybody's like screaming. Ah! <laughs> you get the juice. You, you get, get the, the juice. juice. <laughs> you, get under, under, you get an acquittal. You get an acquittal. <laughs> Everyone look under your seats. It's a glove and a knife. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but then the talk show, talk show and Jerry Springer Jerry Springer started out non-scripted, mm-hmm. and then it devolved into we got to do better than this. We we can do better. We can make it worse. Yeah, because you know Jerry Springer, the former mayor of Cincinnati, is a yes. asshole. You know he gets up every morning, straightens <laughs> that fucking tie, and says, "I'm going to start so much fucking shit today." <laughs> it's, it's the same thought that Vince McMahon had in like 1997, where he said where Jerry we're, Springer, we're, Vince McMahon are probably the same fucking person. Probably like, are like, psychologically, they're the same person yeah because they want to see people get hurt because that's what gets the ratings yeah and they want to display it like it's fucking the nfl yeah <laughs> and but it's like, all scripted and it's yeah. all fucking uh you know track well not, and like the logistics yeah, of it trash. the logistics it, like, of some WWE of the stuff in the late yeah. 90s was, a lot of it was trash some of the logistics of some of these people's problems doesn't make sense it's like oh jerry why are you here oh i've been with my boyfriend for two years you know uh and uh you you want to Tell the truth to your boyfriend after the secret. He's yeah, like, yeah. Yes, I do. Uh, I'm a man. How does he not know? I know yeah. that, that. Those are all these episodes. I'm like, okay. How do you, how do you, how do you not know? Like that's a that's a lot of time apart, or the lights being out. Like <laughs> it's the same as pro wrestling. Pro wrestling. Yeah, it's scripted bullshit. And, and to me, but that's still yeah. I can see where you're coming from. TV though. But then you got like then you got shows that kind of are the same kind of like Maury, Maury Mar- Montel. Montel. Montel had trash. Montel had trash before he got sick. <laughs> See, <laughs> always, everyone associates Maury with the, you know, you are not the father kind of thing. What I and associ- I just moonwalk off stage like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, he had a legitimate talk show for a minute. Because Maury's a fucking psychologist. <laughs> yeah. Well, the epi- but here's the, thing. <laughs> here's the thing, though. 
is he ruined his reputation, not by the you are or not the father episodes, Mm -hmm. but with the irrational fears episodes. You remember those? Yeah. Like the girl that was terrified. Mm -hmm. Of olives. Well, the one that (laughs) sticks out in my head is the girl that was terrified of pickles. Yeah. Terrified of pickles. She gets on the Maury show. No, gets on the Maury show. Yeah, Maury, I'm just, I'm. I'm terrified of pickles. I just, I don't like them. And he's like, oh, oh, really? So, and, and they like slowly put like photos of pickles behind her, like on the TVs, and she doesn't know it. He's like, well, well, then don't turn around. And she like turns around and says, like, ah! And then like people are coming out from the back with like jars of pickles, like the crew members, and she's like losing her mind. And I'm like, like if what? there's no way that's not stage. If you're going to talk about fears, I say, oh no, I'm afraid of dogs. And then bring a fucking German Shepherd out. Yeah, there. yeah. Why? But the, there was no, there was no like investigation into why are you afraid of these things. It's like the one girl who was afraid of olives had like a legitimate fucking fear because her parents were undertakers and they left her in the mortuary by herself, and the body rose up. And his eyes were open, and it looked at her, <laughs> and she and she saw him, and there were green eyes with red pupils. You yeah, know, wait, the body. Ro- all right, so, so rigor mortis, yeah, rigor mortis, oh, mortis, so rigor mortis, mortis gotcha, so when gotcha, you know, gotcha. gases release muscles. Yeah, yeah. Into, well, she's sitting in there because she's the child of morticians. She sees a dead person staring at her with like greenish eyes, and she fucking legitimately has a fear of olives, which is understandable. Yeah, yeah understandable. But then you got people that are scared of the color blue or some shit. Yeah. And I'm just like, how do you function? How do yeah. you not look at the sky and been like in existential dread yeah. the whole fucking time like the rest of us? <laughs> that's, not, that's not irrational. That's just you made that up to get on television. I do like there was a skit uh, Kevin Hart was in on SNL where he's afraid of horses. And because he's so small, <laughs> it kind of makes sense. But he's just like, oh my God, that's a, that's a horse. <laughs> no, that's, a legit, that's a legit phobia, though. My, my best friend growing up was scared of horses. I did not know that until one day we were fixing a wired fence. And we, and we go back to the truck. And a horse just walks up. I'm like, oh, cool, horse, man. That's, oh, this that is- and he's like fucking like kicking the goddamn door, like kicking the fuck out the car, dude. Like, I was like, are you okay? He's like, fuck that thing, dude. And I'm just like, oh, you're scared of horses. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's so a quick sidebar, though. Like, if you, everybody listening should Google Eric Berry with the horses because he played at the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. And there was like, uh, the mascot was, you know, a giant uh, horse. A giant horse. Yeah. Some, or somebody riding a horse out in the field. Yeah. And he goes, like, uh uh-uh, uh, uh uh, I ain't fucking with no horses, bro. Like, he's yeah. like legit, like going, like, uh uh-uh, uh, keep that shit away from me. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> like uh, the Chargers. The Chargers yeah. have a giant horse mascot. <laughs> but yeah, what were you about to say? Alex? Oh, yeah. Side note to the side note. Uh, yeah. Quick little trail off. I'm not going to name the name, but uh, there was a friend of ours growing up, and uh, he said that he had like this and it took him a while for us for him to tell us but he said that he had this crazy irrational fear of dolphins okay like the sound the look how smooth they were like that the eyes looked weird the the you know yeah. the little cackle they do <laughs> but yeah <clears throat> dolphins are rapists though so <laughs> we learned that from king of the hills yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you know he always say he had this irrational fear of dolphins and it's like and we sometimes poke at them of course because that's what you do when you're teenagers and you find out your friend is scared of something yeah you, you walk up behind them do the ah! he's like fuck you fuck you me okay. you know all this kids are psychopaths yes exactly and i was one of them <laughs> um, they should yeah. uh, <laughs> and then all of a sudden one day we did it to him and he didn't react oh shit and we were like we kept doing it he goes okay yeah guys the joke's up I've never been afraid of dolphins <laughs> he had this ongoing fake that's, phobia that's, for that's, years that's dedication oh yeah, yeah really he dedicated when to that fucking joke when you take a lie and make it part of your life that's, that, that's a show I want to watch <laughs> <laughs> for real though <laughs> <laughs> that, that'd be a great reality show. It's like, hey, she's going to tell you five facts about her. One, it's like two truths and a lie. Oh yeah, tell me. You got to figure out which ones, what part lie that she she did she incorporate into her lifestyle. Like she's a vegan. Yeah, she goes. Is it, hold on, like yeah, that would actually be really interesting and cruel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I gave her like four sausage links and she ate them. God, is it any more cruel than everything than anything else we've talked about so yeah, far? But like, but like when you go to re, like just reality TV in general. All right, so. We got, you know, the competition reality, mm-hmm. the trash TV talk mm-hmm. show reality, caps. Yeah. <laughs> the that's, its own, that's its own Venn diagram. Like, can, you, can you imagine just what hits harder than cops? Like, <laughs> like, oh, you know, keep it over the Kardashians, trash TV. Now nah, that's too many syllables. Yeah. Nah, too many syllables. Housewives of Orange County. Nah, that's a big title. Cops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what is hey, you, you? Do you guys remember the title theme? Like other than the song, 
other than the bad boys? Cops. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, do you remember it? No, I, do. I, 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 I don't do. remember what he said, but I do remember it. Cops is filmed on location with the brave men and women of law enforcement. Yeah, all, all parties are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Verbatim. But, but then you've also got like America's Most Wanted. American Most Wanted were real fucking people who were monsters. Yes. <laughs> this got killed and ate 12 children. We don't know where he is. This is Terry who's like selling meth behind a fucking yeah. Burger King. Yeah. yeah. And he oh, killed God. his landlord with a giant AC unit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if you find him, let us know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so they revamped. Hey, so, so they redid Unsolved Mysteries. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you had America's Most Wanted. And then at night, Robert Stack would come on and tell you about, you know, the devil or the aliens or whatever the fuck. <laughs> Anunnaki. <laughs> Anunnaki. <laughs> and then he'll be like, oh, yeah. And the Brown Street Rapist. And he's like, oh, that's a real guy. So that's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> we have no idea where he's at. He's part Bush. Like, yes. <laughs> Um, but but think about like, like, it's like you I, would have that show you would have the unsolved mystery so they revamped it for Netflix I'm sitting there watching it with my dad and like there's a thing that's like this guy had killed a girl uh, like a 14 year old girl and he got to prison escaped in the 70s and they don't know where he's at he's still at large and my dad's like this is what I hate about these fucking crime shows they never tell me the end I'm like it's unsolved mysteries it's like <laughs> unsolved. there's no ending and he's like holy fuck I forgot I was watching unsolved mysteries <laughs> he forgot he was watching it because Robert Stack isn't there no more because Robert <laughs> oh Stack when he told you something. It ain't fu- you ain't gonna find that motherfucker. No. <laughs> well, but still think of the concept of this show. We're gonna show you this terrifying individual, but here's the catch: we don't know where he is, and we need your help to find him. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> you know how many act like when that's so it's like you know when you see him, don't call the cops. You know, if call one eight hundred. Well, you know what the fucked up part about that was a very fucked up part about my It worked. Well, it worked, but the other fucked up part of us, those people that did the reenactments, were getting their asses kicked in real life. Yes. One dude was like playing a, like was reenacting being a rapist, walking through the streets and shit, and they're like, hey, if you see this guy, call America's Most Wanted. Oh, so, and some dude's like, so, holy shit, that's the guy America's Most Wanted. I saw it on and TV. Like, and then like, elbow dropped that motherfucker. He's like, stop, stop, I'm just an actor. He's like, you're a rapist. <laughs> <laughs> That's Damn. a terrible. You got to think about that. Like some of these actors you know, they had looked like the guys, and yeah. this is like a really. I kind of want to know if like a guy actually pretended to be an actor to play himself on American Most Wanted, <gasps> just to like some weird like oh, Ted shit. Bundy narcissism years. <laughs> right? Oh shit! And then we'll throw him in the meat grinder. See, we got <laughs> two uh, uh, pitches now. Pitches, yeah, <laughs> one killer, solid movie idea. Killer or actor? Yes. <laughs> That'd be a, like a fucking like fucked up movie so, idea. Well, isn't that the story of uh, what's his nuts? That was uh, the dating game. Killer? Yeah, Rondé Alcala. Yeah, he was a real killer. But people, like the guy, the people on the show were like, "That dude's fucking creepy as shit. Get him yeah. away from me." Because right. <laughs> most of the women he killed weren't on the show. Now he right. killed one. He killed but one girl. But the other women he killed. And like, I like, I like how they just he just gave off a vibe. These guys who decided to be on a reality show. He's like, man. I'm on a game about fucking some strange, but that dude's weird. Yeah. <laughs> that dude's fucking weird. It's kind of like um, the newlywed game when it was actually just Johns and Whores. Right. Most of the time, they uh-huh. weren't even newlyweds. They were just like, oh, this is Pamela. Uh, we're, we're How did you meet Pamela? Ex- Before the show. That's not the script. That's not the script. <laughs> <laughs> How did you meet Pamela? Oh, in high school. Yeah. But, yeah. It's not like I just paid her 25 bucks for a handy. <laughs> We touched on it uh, briefly uh, about kind of the uh, educational side of things. Like you would see, uh, like uh, reality-based shows on Discovery and things like that yeah. too. Like, and, that, uh, and this is this is what I this is, I remember the turn. I remember the turn because you had. I remember growing up. I was either watching MTV or VH1. Yep. Before I went to school, or because I had to wake up at like five in the morning, I'd watch Modern Marvels. Yeah. Yeah. Great shows, educational. Um, watch the music videos. Learn about how Disneyland's. You know, probably the peer of Satan. Yes. Um, or like the uh, everybody's favorite Australian hero who was crazier than batshit, you know. Steve Irwin. Steve Irwin. Rest in peace. Yep. But yeah, they, these guys, you know, flaunted their abilities, you know, because mm-hmm. this is their job. You know, he handled animals. Uh, cops beat the fuck out of people. Like, <laughs> but like, this was, the, this was a job-based reality show. Yep. And then Micro came along. With dirty jobs, dirty jobs, because somebody's got to do it. <laughs> so, so here's the cool thing about what I like about micro is micro is a micro, little micro micro is a little uh, a little bit conservative, which is fine. He but he He's has working some, class and all that yeah. too. Yeah, but he makes a great point of why you can go to trade school and still be successful. Yeah. Which I'm all for. Yeah, me too. And like when it comes to like colleges and stuff, make that shit free. Yeah, mm-hmm. make a trade school free. Just, you know, teach welding for free. Teach fucking carpentry for free. Teach, you know, archaeology, whatever the fuck, for free. 
you know, create a land of professionals. Yeah. And the cool thing about Dirty Jobs was it showed you some professionals who did who were doing like some some amazing stuff. Like oh yeah, the guys who took care of your water, like yeah. <laughs> at the water plant. Yeah. You want to pay attention to these motherfuckers because if you don't pay them enough, they're going to kill a whole fucking community. Yeah. <laughs> Or like the desalination plant was the weirdest one because it evaporated water and it was just so hot and you see him coming out and he's just like, dude, get the fuck out of there. Oh yeah, all this dangerous Why shit Why do we too. not have a robot doing this shit? <laughs> like you felt bad for the man, but he would do like the sewage cleanup, all that. He'd do like some kind of like surf pro type job. Yeah. And like, and they celebrated all this. Oh stuff. yeah, and but he was like, you know, somebody's got to do it, and it's true. Somebody does have to do it, and they can be a professional at doing it. Yeah, and like, hire you some o- OCD looking motherfuckers <laughs> who are just like, no, nah, it's got to be tip top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going to clean this whole goddamn house, and it's just like, and if one little thing is wrong, then it, the whole shit's fucked. Then we got we got to burn it down. Yeah, and start over. <laughs> well, and then you've also got like the hidden camera reality shows, like punked. Well, yeah, punked, and then I was thinking of um. Even stuff like Undercover Boss. Yeah. Undercover Boss yeah. and um, the other one, the 2020 ones, mm-hmm. where it was just like, we're going to blatantly do something racist or unethical in front of people and see how they act. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, don't do that. Yeah. Don't. Because you know, you can't. was this time period where <laughs> like, like everybody. Even ex- 2020 was getting in on it. That's yeah. exactly what he said. So, like, so you have the writer strike in the mid 20s. Uh, or 20, uh, 2000s. <laughs> the mid 20s. <laughs> uh, so, so the 2000s. Yeah. And so other shows are going to, you know, who are popular are sticking around, you know. Um, Mad About You, Frasier, and stuff like that. They're yeah, out all the your door. T- all your top tier. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, they're out the door. Friends is still kicking. Yeah. Friends is one of the few sitcoms that survived the writer strike. Um, but you somehow bring it to the forefront, and it's mainly MTV's fault because um, some of their reality shows were like I want to say bottom of the barrel. Mm-hmm. I'd agree. So with that. you had like comp- competitive reality shows, and you had like G Four doing American Ninja Warrior, yeah. which is a you know reality competition, but it's short. Yeah, it takes them five minutes. Yep, five minutes. If they run, if they if they make it to five minutes, they're, they're on top of the tower. They press the button. They're good. Yeah. Most of the time. They're getting their asses kicked. Yeah. <laughs> and then you also had like Robot Wars. Yeah. But for reality TV itself, you had the Jersey Shore. See, I never even super... indulged. I never even watched it. I had it. no choice. That was like ever present Weren't really? around me when I was like, uh, when it was the thing, you know? My buddy, fucking Metalhead, same guy who's scared of horses. <laughs> <laughs> we we grew up, I, I go over to his house one day, he's watching the Jersey Shore, and he's like, dude, watch this shit. It's just the real these, world. He's like, That's all it is. He's like, these people are fucking animals, dude. Yeah. He's like, and he's like, here, watch this. And it shows the little one, uh, Stucky. Yeah. <laughs> and like, he shows the little one, and she gets punched in the face See, by this guy. And I'm just like, holy yeah. shit, because that, that was actually real. Yeah. And then the whole show just kind of, you can see like the camera like shake a little bit, like, Oh fuck! The cameraman's are like, oh fuck! <laughs> there were I saw motherfuckers Snooki wearing t- shirts. I saw motherfuckers wearing t-shirts that said, "I punched Snooky." Yeah, that's how big this fucking shit was. But you had you have you have those the Real Housewives show, the um, and then all the Kardashians, stuff, Kardashians, all the shit that was going on on VH1, yeah, which with, are still going now, yeah. and all the spinoffs and all these shit, and somehow a teenager is a fucking millionaire or billionaire because she asked him want, for money. See, who wants to fuck Flavor Flav? Well, I was going to say, <laughs> so like, let's go back into the board meeting. All right, guys. Bachelor and Bachelorette's been doing really good. Like, but, but, but man, we've just been picking like nobodies, like just good looking nobodies, like, you know, the, like the, you know, the Bottom small the town bit. heroes, you know, like the popular kids in the small towns. That's what we're picking. Like, what, what if we reached for like bigger fish? Like, like, like flavor flavor. Like flavor flavor. <laughs> like, he needs a job. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that like some girls would want to like date flavor flavor. Just like, little, this little raisin of a fucking yeah. human. <laughs> and then it's like that was some successful, and they're like, all right, all right, that was good, but like we really reached like a specific demographic all with right, that now one. Now let's do the same thing, but for white people. <laughs> yeah, let, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, do, let's do Brett Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> but like. But when, the thing about that was famous musicians. Then you have Hogan knows best. Oh yeah, well, yeah. That we was just that one the other week. The that's the same, that's you know, the same thing as the Osbournes. Yeah, the Osbournes were early, and then you had uh, Gene, Gene, Gene Simmons. Simmons' family jewels. Okay, 
And now you Hogan's got- knows best. Ruin that fucking family. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, like that was the fucked up thing about that show is like so that was that was by the time we got uh, Direct TV. Yeah. So we finally had like you know ca- like Dish Satellite TV, and it's like we were watching a bunch of VH1 and stuff like that. So it's like I knew about Hulk Hogan because even though I wasn't like a big wrestling fan at the time, everybody knows who Hulk Hogan is. Everyone like still knew. So it's like I I had an appreciation. So I was like, oh, Hulk Hogan has a TV show now and i remember like the first like maybe season and being like oh well this is kind of funny you know this is interesting and then like literally between seasons shit went down between the family Mm -hmm. so then all of a sudden it was like the all new season of hogan knows best it's just like it's so dark yes he's like my wife's leaving me (sighs) i was was just here because i couldn't tell if the daughter was hot or not (laughs) the big old shoulders and i'm just sitting here going like oh my god this family is devolving in front of our eyes that's what reality tv does it devolves yeah a a human species (laughs) yeah and and the fucking thing people aren't meant we mentally aren't built to be watched Mm mm-mm like, and, and, and the fucked up thing about it too is okay. Let's pull up a scenario for us real quick. All right, all three of us. Uh, you you've played golf before, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. You you've played, Chris. No. Yep. You haven't played golf. I have almost crashed a golf cart. Okay. With, well, with a this, driver. You've been right. on a golf course. All right. Well, th- this Pup-puts, works, my man. Th- this works then. All right. Um, Cap and I decide to go play golf. You decide to ride along because you want to drive the go kart and drink beer. <laughs> and you just want to hang out. And you're like, oh, I'd rather okay. do that too. I, I'll, I'll just. He's like, fuck it. I'll just commentate. <laughs> so you're doing that. Cinderella story here in Augusta. Uh, <laughs> after about the sixth <laughs> hole, you're feeling pretty good because you've had a few drinks. Uh, you're picking up some speed. We round the corner. Go kart tips over, and I sprain my ankle. Okay. Yeah. About how much news coverage would that need? None. Exactly. I remember watching TV and they were showing a clip for the Osbournes. I was about to, I thought this is where it was going. Yes. And there was a thing of Ozzy was playing golf and like the golf cart tipped over and like he sprained or like broke his ankle. But I remember the promotional material for this thing, making it seem like he had a heart attack and like keeled over. It was like on the next episode of the Osbournes. And there's like the shaky camera footage and they're like, ah, you like see the golf cart tipping over and you're like ah and like all this it's like making it so dramatic and then like the episode happens and then yeah he's just like i think i broke my ankle and he's just like laying there he's like get me to the hospital and then five minutes into the episode he's just sitting on the couch with a neck brace and yeah it's just, and he's just like <laughs> yeah it hurts. that sucked but. yeah and, and it's just like <laughs> It, this, uh, it, they That's would it. also That's just make the most mundane things yeah. the biggest issues. So, like, but we all fell for it. My sister watches one, uh, and it's about people on a boat, like a yacht. It's like one of those, like, like, like uh, I feel like it's like it's like a vacation yacht. You know, you would rent out this boat. They go out to sea, and it'd be like a hotel. Yeah. Okay. I've ne- but I've it's, but never it's heard of this. But, but yeah, uh, I call it whore boat because <laughs> my sister would watch it I'm like oh you're watching Whore Boat <laughs> and I'm like it's it's a vacation boat that you, has a crew people that take care of you waiters waitresses so it's the fucking love boat it's the love boat with less people hmm yeah. alright and, and more fucking yes <laughs> but you know the, these people live on this boat mm-hmm. the, the crew lives on this boat takes out rich people out to sea you know wines and dines them for like a weekend or a week or some shit and then they come back and the whole show is about these people who work on a boat I'm just like, where's the content? Like, yeah. there's not that much going on on this boat. It can't be. And they're talking about, oh, you know, I'm thinking about fucking old girl. And she's like, oh, no, I want to fuck that guy. And then it's just like the cook is just in the back like, hey, um, I chopped my fucking thumb off. Like, can we get back to shore? It's like, no, we can't get back to shore. Wrap that shit up and make that crab brand good. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, God. I guarantee but, you all of us at the table watch this one. Because you're, you, you're actually going down the list of the TV networks. Mm-hmm. So... We hadn't even talked about a lot of the ABC ones yet, Mm -hmm. but one more on Fox that aired a lot that, again, I can almost promise you all of us at this table watched The Simple Life. Yeah. I never watched (laughs) You never watched The Simple Life with Paris Hilton? I did not give a fuck about Paris Hilton. So Paris Hilton could be like the biggest piece of trash. Yeah. I just didn't care. But she had a pig. I don't know if you remember the pig. She had bought bought a... uh, teacup pig or a whatever teacup pig yeah well she was lied to it's not a teacup pig it's not even a baby like a like a miniature pig yeah i found out today she still has that pig 
It's probably like 200 pounds or something like that at this Dude, point. Dude, this is a big goddamn pig. And yeah. he's like taking Instagram photos with it and shit. I saw it on uh, Imgur. And I'm just like, well, that's kind of cool. Like, you know, she hung on to the pig. But like, you know, most people, like, most assholes get rid of the pig. Yeah. And this thing is like a 7,000 pound, seven foot long goddamn pig. And she's like, hell yeah. This is, this is like the best part of my life. Right. And you actually kind of feel like... That's great. That's cool. Yeah. That's, that, 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 you know, that takes the stupidness away from it a little yeah. bit. Yeah, because uh, they definitely were playing it up on yeah. that show. There's no way those two were that dumb and made it that far in life. Even yeah. as sheltered, I, I can imagine how sheltered they can be. You know, because so, I've seen a lot of like even YouTube kids that have like a lot of money, and I see how sheltered they can be. There's no way they can be that dumb and still be. It's that not. It's, devil, it's definitely not, an so act. That, that it whole, has to. That, be. that whole like, oh, that's hot, guys. That's an act for it, sure. Yes, that is an act. But the part that you know, it's not that they're dumb. They're not. They're not aware because you got to think about simple situations that we do every day that rich people do not. Uh, Gerald Ford, the president of the United States at one time, who we go from Paris Hilton to Gerald Ford. I love it. Well, he's a goddamn Episcopalian. So, <laughs> Welcome to the couch potatoes, folks. <laughs> he goes to a grocery store as a promotion thing, and they're like, hey, have you ever you know, checked out your food before? And it was so like the first self-checkout in 1972. He goes to use it. He's like, what do I do? He'd never been in a grocery store. I can see that. He had never been in a grocery store because his wife or mom or whoever the fuck I would, went to the grocery store and he had never used a fucking lazy... What year? It was 1972. And... So he had already been vice president. What was his term? Or had been president of what? 1972, 1972 to 1976. He was president at that time, right? 19, he, he ended his presidency in 1976. Okay. But it was a promotional thing. He had never gone to a grocery store. He had no idea what fucking price... It was like the uh, thing. It was like when rich people got to guess prices on the prices, right? Yeah, they don't fucking know. He's like, "What do you think this bottle of orange juice is?" I don't know, like five bucks. It's like, no, it's a dollar. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but like he had gone back then and done it, and then they did it again with George Bush Jr. He had no idea what the fuck he was doing, and it was just like this comparison thing I was uh, watching because like Jared Ford's looking at it and he's just like, "I don't get it," because he's standing where the cashier should be. Yeah, and she's like, "No, I scan your food," <laughs> and he's like, "I don't get it. How does it know?" It doesn't have it on the on oh, the box. It's because they've, the they've had everybody do everything. I'm, not, I'm else. Gerald Ford. It's not on the box. <laughs> yeah. so Chris had, is like waving his hand but, in my face. Like, but like the box. you got to think about those two girls. You know, they're they're not dumb. They just don't know. Yeah. Well, see, I, I'm sorry. I, for some, my brain immediately got wrapped up in the idea that how old was this man? Gerald Ford at that time was probably uh, late 40s, early 50s. Okay, so it's like, I'm imagining, okay, maybe as a kid he didn't like, you know, go to the grocery store with his mom or whatever. You know, maybe it was like the super, super traditional family mm-hmm. of, you know, the... Episcopalians. The, yeah, the, the wife just <laughs> dealt with everything, you know, so may, maybe that's the case. But, like, as a teenager even, like... He never like went there just to grab some snacks. He didn't. He didn't go there to grab a. He didn't go there to grab a pop, uh, you know, for the girl next door. You know that. That's the thing that I'm like totally lost. What do you got to think about when he was eighteen, twenty? In his, you know, eighteen to twenty, they had a fucking diner for that. They probably it's probably going it's about, to Yale or Harvard. It's about or whatever the fuck what you school. know. Like I if know. I told you to go outside and tell me what size tire I have on my car, could you do it? No, I need okay. I need a maybe a ruler or a tape measure. You don't. It's on the tire. But <laughs> but what you, you would, what you, what you could do but what you could do is you can infer the numbers based on the car but you don't know out the gate that's correct the great thing you're about, right that's the great thing about today you can just look on fucking YouTube hey how does the tire measure it and you'll be like oh it's the inside numbers on the rim mm-hmm. okay where's the battery on the car actually I could I could find that one. Okay, find it in a Bonneville, a Pontiac Bonneville. Tell okay, me, yeah, right. You okay. couldn't find it because you have to rip the back seat out to get to the goddamn battery. Right. You wouldn't know that out the gate unless mm-hmm. you looked at a bold YouTube or you read the owner's manual. Yeah. Yeah. So it's about situational awareness. You could be like, "Hey, play me a G chord." I'm just like, "What?" And just like, <laughs> "I can't do it because I don't know it." Right. Yeah. I can't do it. Now, if I asked you to replace. Uh, the motherboard on a fucking Generac battery. No, nope, you can't do it. <laughs> okay, you can do it. <laughs> but like it's it's. But the whole thing is echelon in class. Mm-hmm. The easy things that come to us that every day I, that is not every day to them. They right. have a person for that. Mm-hmm. You got to exactly. think about it like a slave owner. They have a yeah, person for that. You're right. Yeah, and they played it. And it was kind of cruel to do it that way. But they, you know, they made money off of it, so it's, it's okay. <laughs> but like, but. It's not that they're dumb. They just know different stuff than us. Right. If she's like, well, Alex, I got to get to Houston, but I can't go through Atlanta. What are we going to do? 
and she knows what to do. She'll just get a jet and fly to fucking Houston. Yeah. But yeah. to you, you're just like, I have no idea, bitch. So <laughs> like, that's not my thing. It's I play 2000, music. It's, <laughs> it's 2002. I don't, there's no GPS. I need a fucking map yeah. or whatever. But like it, when they're putting her on the farm, it's like, hey, I need you to castrate this pig. She's like, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah. He's like, no, you put like a rubber band around his nuts and they kind of just fall off. <laughs> well, I think it was more or less, they weren't even like poking it like, ha ha, they don't know how to do farm work. It was like their reactions to having to do the mm-hmm. farm work. That yeah. That's more or less what it was. That was that reactionary and kind that goes, of. And that can go back to, uh, my, that can go back to Dirty Jobs. Yep. Yeah. We have no idea what keeps the society going. <laughs> we have no idea. And that's why I felt that was actually kind of a good segue because yeah. a lot of the times they were doing farm work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's, it's basically a class war they're trying to facilitate <laughs> like cops yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know i never watched simple life or anything like that because i feel like i did farm work when i was a kid too so i feel like no nah, i don't want to watch so, that it'll just piss me off so when micro <laughs> started um there was a change in television i don't want to say quality mm-hmm. but what you saw i remember watching like steve Irwin and stuff on tlc yeah, yeah. what does tlc stand for was it uh total lot uh fuck i forget what does tlc stand for total learning channel the learning the, channel. the yeah, learning yeah, yeah. channel yeah. <laughs> what's on the learning channel my uh, 600 midget. pound life yeah. <laughs> like, god damn job of the hut yeah exactly stop giving stop I eating did. dominoes for breakfast or it'd i did be okay or i didn't know i was pregnant <laughs> i didn't know i was pregnant. yeah okay yeah. That, i have such a problem with that show and, and, and not even okay i'm I may be pissing people off here. I don't care. And not even the show. I've seen like actual like YouTube things of like people that genuinely didn't know they were pregnant. Not even the scripted reality shit, but like actual mm. news reports of people that didn't know they were pregnant until like eight months in. Yeah. And I'm and I'm looking at the girl and she's like not fat. Yeah. And I'm like, how the fuck do you not know? Like I puking and. Doing all everything else that comes with pregnancy too, you know. It's like I'm not a man whore, but it's like I've had a good amount of girlfriends and long enough, like for longer than a month, kind of situation. So it's like I have been around women that, like, if their period is even a week late, they're like, "Uh oh," yeah. <laughs> you know. These women are going months, mm-hmm. and they're like, eh, "Everything's fine." <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't get it either. That, but. That, was, that is seriously a series of shows that just really pissed me off. Along with connected to the whole 600 pound life, the weird addiction shows. Mm. Isn't TLC like the bottom of the barrel as it far has as to be. fucking content? Because they were the ones that were like, yeah, I'm addicted to it and eating dryer lint. Yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah. No, you're not. No, you're not. So, Stop it. So now we go. I like fiberglass. So, it reminds me of cotton candy. Oh, my so, God. <laughs> So we go from trash television, like the, the observance reality, to shame television. Yeah. Oh, okay. So shame, shame, shame television. Shame television. That's My, TLC. Yeah, you were talking about addiction. Uh, what was it called? Uh, intervention. Yes. Mm-hmm. My favorite thing about intervention was them relapsing. <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> oh no, Terry was addicted. She she was addicted to heroin. She stole from her mama. She killed her father. Whatever the fuck, and like she killed someone at the IHOP. She you know, over over a thing of pancakes. Whatever, because she's on a fucking mental lapse. Okay, great. She got clean. She's better. Good for her. And I was just waiting. <laughs> I would wait for like the very like the longer episodes, like an hour and a half. Because yeah, the you know, recaps. Because you know that's the relapse episode. Yeah. And it's just like, <laughs> oh no, Terry got back into fucking banging heroin like within a week. <laughs> and I'm just like, ha! <laughs> you weak wheel trash. <laughs> was TLC the network that had like all the honey boo boo shit too? Yep. Yeah. But that goes back to like observance trash TV. Like, but like intervention, hoarders, hoarders. Like hoarders. This oh my is, god! This is shame television. Now, Honey Boo Boo, they bettered their lives because now they have a new influx of money. Yeah, right. they were go. They went from white trash USA, and now they're doing well in life. 
that that's the crux of that show. Let's mom, just pick mom, a random fucking family and give them the reality TV lottery. Mom still willingly dated a pedophile, but whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> whatever. Sorry, True. I still have to mention that every fucking time. I'm just like because <laughs> everyone tries to like repaint that show and be like, well, you know, that was just reactionary, you know, blah blah blah. No, the no. mom mom still willingly dated a pedophile and then Can't fuck her off. Somebody <laughs> take that baby away. <laughs> She's probably a full grown adult now, but still. But uh, you take you take take you that know, baby away. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the most Tennessee thing you've said on this show in a minute. He's like, someone take that baby away. I'll save you, honey boo boo. <laughs> you got some chicken nuggets. <laughs> yeah, that's how you lure her. Just go, hey. <laughs> it's like a box of KFC. <laughs> Here's your bucket. <laughs> and you I see, likes me the skin. And then you see her like carve out a bone. <laughs> anyway, so, so that goes back to observance reality TV. Now, right. tr- uh, shame TV though, hoarders. And I understand hoarding. So if you look, if you look at who hoards, it's mm. people who were born poor. Yeah. And I mean, not not poor as in oh we don't have a lot. I mean we're motherfucking broke. Yeah. All right, we're moving houses constantly. All my shit's getting lost while we move. I can't have anything, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Our Depression-era kids. Yeah. Kids who live through Depression. So older people who are hoarders. I know a couple of hoarders. Mm-hmm. Uh, they collect knickknacks or something they think is going to be valuable down the road. Yeah. These same people, you know, the Beanie Babies, mm-hmm. Pokemon cards, basketball, baseball cards. Yeah, same fucking thing. Mm-hmm. Except they made it a hobby. These people collect everything. Yeah. Like dead cat bodies. Yeah. yeah. And, and McDonald's <laughs> cups. Yeah. Um, so, there's, see, there, the, but, but, but for them, but for them, you know, the whole crux of it is, oh, let's let's make them better, let's help them through it, and then you're just like, they're just gonna fucking relapse again. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> the, the thing Do is, I, fail. I there was a period of my of time where I watched a lot of those hoarder and like uh, intervention shows because those the for some reason shame TV mm-hmm. attracted me more than like reality TV as it was almost like the I know I'm not gonna be this so let me watch other people go through yeah, it that's kind the of whole point it's all fucked up it's a fucked up way of looking at it I'm not saying it proudfully I'm just saying that's I, why we watch Jerry Springer and Maury and all that shit too exactly so it's like I'm, while I'm watching this all of a sudden I start going Huh. I do save like a lot of random pieces of paper of something that like I could eventually use for something. And it's like ever since I've started watching those shows, about maybe once a year I have a fuck it cleanup where it's just like I'm throwing everything in like trash bags. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like it's like a once a year spring cleaning thing. I'm like, nope, 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 getting rid of all this. <laughs> and it's like, and I had a storage unit when I first moved here of like shit I hadn't touched in years. Mm-hmm. I just let it lapse and I just let it go. Yeah. As so I'm like, you know what? I've not been here in years. I clearly don't need anything that's in there. If I walk in there, I'm going to find a million little things I want to keep. You know what? Mm-hmm. If I just go ahead and not even think about it again, I won't need it. So it's like I, I just had to start doing little things like that, being like, I am not going to become one of these 50 year old men being like, be careful over all the Pokemon cards. <laughs> but, you know, we watch these shows not only just to feel better for ourselves, but to see what what's in society that we're not going to see a lot. Yeah, um, yeah. or like uh, we get we covered TLC uh, and uh, Shame Television and stuff like that. But then you go over to Spike TV, and then you're watching Lock Up and prison oh, shows God, and all yeah. that shit, like the fucking uh, Scared Straight. Yeah. yeah. Hold my pocket. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of a fucked up show if you think about it. it. Some kids that like you know fucking were like tardy for school or like got caught with a little bit of weed or you know it's like you know brought a gun to school you know, or like a kid, knife you know, know or some ever, smaller I, shit you probably see it you probably see it online little shorts but it's like the one kid that was just unaffazed yes the guy with glasses a little white kid and he's like I ain't gonna see my kids again ever I ain't never getting out he's like chill out man yeah and it's just like what Chill out! I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> like, nah, you won't. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember the one. Your dog was, on a chain. <laughs> I, I, it was like uh, there was one of them. They were like, you know, get your fuck in the get, get the fuck in there. Get the fuck in there. Come on, get your ass in here. And he's like, I can't. I, you You're blocking the, the door. door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, this dude is going to be a senator. <laughs> <laughs> didn't didn't uh, Spike have that one show where it's like I fell in love in prison or something yeah. like that? Yeah. What? Yeah, it was like so. This. So that that was. I really love Jerry. <laughs> it was well, like no, shit it was, like that. It was like like guys and women who had like pen pals and shit. 
and they eventually like married him and shit. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, kind of like um, it's like Spike became like the uh, like the gangland slash God, prisoner. I, love the gangland. I watched all that shit too. Yeah, the Knights of the White Nation. I'm just like yeah. holy shit. And then the Crips and Bloods and the all Crips that shit and Bloods, too. The Black Disciples. The yes. fuck. <laughs> all the motorcycle gangs. Oh yeah, Hell's, <laughs> Hell's Angels. The fucking uh, what was it? Uh, the Ghouls or some shit. And then the Outlaws. The Outlaws. And then there was uh, God. Uh, it was like a Mexican biker gang. It was badass. Yeah. But, but like that, you, you learned about gangs on that show. That's the thing about like Spike in general. And the dude's just, voice? Mm-hmm. Tell me that dude didn't have the best narration voice. This week on oh, Gangland. Gangland. <laughs> it was like... <laughs> dun- <laughs> but uh, the narrator, if you guys get a chance, check out some stupid Gangland shit on YouTube. Just listen to the narrator's voice. It's fucking fantastic. He narrated like a shit ton of stuff on Spike. Oh, yeah. And I would watch this shit at like 10 o'clock in the morning. And I, like, I watch Spike. people... I, like, I know people who watch Lock Up. Yeah, and I'm just like, it's not, it's not my thing. They're in prison. Let them, let them do what they got to do and get the fuck out of prison. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Instead of sticking a camera in their face, there's like a solitary confinement show. I think. Yeah, that's a fucking device that creates mental illness. Yes, it literally creates mental illness, and we made a fucking show out of it. All these God fucking, bless America. All these fucking <laughs> reality shows create fucking mental illness. So, so let's 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 talk about. Right, go ahead and make your point. Uh, uh, well, I, I, it may trail off too far, so just make sure to remember yours. Oh, I will. The, re- the reverse of the shame reality show that also has to deal with a lot of mental shit, and it's, it's what I was kind of teasing earlier, a lot of the ABC mm. reality shows, because uh, think about context. NBC, CBS, Fox, they're all owned individually. ABC is owned by... Disney. Disney is not going to allow a lot of trash reality through their censors. So if ABC is going to get on the reality TV show train, they have to do it a little different. So what do they do? Extreme makeover. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. So before I will say before extreme makeover mm-hmm. and extreme makeover home edition. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, before these happened, there was this thing called Monster House. Or Monster Garage. Yeah. Yes, Monster Garage. Monster Garage. Monster Garage was much like, you know, Pimp My Ride. Mm-hmm. Kind of. But for white people. But for whites. Um, <laughs> but American this dude, Chopper. This dude would go to your house and find one thing you liked. Uh, tell me, just tell me one thing you like. Just one random thing that you enjoy. Just double stuff Oreos. Double stuff Oreos. I'm, I'm making your living room inspired by Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> I got double stuffed sofas. Double stuffed couches. All right? I got a machine that puts that's, Oreos in your motherfucking mouth. That's right. <laughs> and like, that's pretty much what they did. <laughs> and they're like, oh, we're going to skirt every structural permit. We're yep. going to knock out support beams and shit and we're going to fill your house with sand and replace it with a thatch roof <laughs> that you have to replace every two months because it's thatch. <laughs> it's grass. Thatch is dead grass you like going to the beach once every 10 years yeah, yeah we're doing it here motherfucker <laughs> all the sand yeah it's always like vague fucking like ideas and shit like that and it was that. just like what are you doing to this house <laughs> but the makeover I remember the wood where they uh, painted, the, painted the inside of the house like a brown color yeah and I'm just like they were crying because they devalued the house. Yeah. Oh, that's the thing is like that that was the one hook of those shows. Is sometimes you would get the families in there where they're just like, oh, We're just so thankful and they came in and they did this that, and the other. Now we can't afford the property tax. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. kind of the bad underside of that. But, but there were other families that like they would get the new house and like the whole family would be freaking out except for like one member. And they're just like, This is fucking terrible. Yeah. And like they're finding fault with every little thing. Like, what was the name? Ty Pennington, something yeah, like that. That sounds and, right. And he's just like, "What? Well, you know, you know, like the new house." And he's like smiling at the camera, and she's like, "No, no, I don't." This is terrible. Yeah, and it's like, and they never like fully resolved like the we way they thought this, of it. We have to sell this now because we can't burn it down. Yeah. yeah, but but much like Pimp My Ride and Extreme Makeover Home Edition, a lot of those shows out ended up doing a lot more bad than good. Yeah. Or like a bar rescue and shit like that. Bar too. rescue was fake from the ground up. It's got to be that ruined fucking bars too. But but I watched a compilation of bar rescue about a couple months ago because like some random clip showed up and I'm like, there's no way this is a real show. Oh, I used- and I pulled it up and I, and I seriously for about two hours fell into like a bar rescue rabbit hole. So I got mm-hmm. like a deep dive on it. Mm. There's no 
fucking way no. this show is real. Like he's coming in going, I'm so and so. Like in front of everyone, like I'm so and so. I'm Dark Tapper. You fucking catch yeah. a fucking ball. Yes. And I'm like, there's <laughs> no way this can't be real. And that host is insufferable. Mm-hmm. He is insufferable. But for some reason, I was captivated and watched two oh, hours dude. worth of the content. I would watch like that would be my fucking Sunday hangover fucking like afternoon like in my football off season. <laughs> as, okay, as maybe like part of a little bit of a wrap up. We just perfectly exemplified it. I'm sitting here going, this show has to be fake as fuck. The the host is insufferable. But yet, I dedicated an entire afternoon mm-hmm. of watching compilations of the show. Yep. Why do we do this? Because we like watching people suffer. Yeah, because that's all reality TV is, just human experiments. Think, uh, no, no, this, this actually goes back a very long way. So, a great example, Rome in its prime heyday. Yeah, from Asia to fucking France, North Africa, they conquered it all. You got people, citizens. Citizens are the echelon of being Roman. Mm-hmm. We got to make them happy. Hey, we ran out of bread. We ran out of meat. Ran out of wine. What happens when you start running out of shit in the city? People, yeah, people start grabbing swords, guns, whatever the fuck they can, because eventually they're fucking pissed. Mm-hmm. How do you quell a society that's starving and pissed? You give them something. You give them something called bread and circuses. This Mm -hmm. is a real thing. It's a distraction from your ordinary lives because we as as humans cannot handle modernity. We can't handle just doing the same old thing over and over and over again. How many times have you worked a job where you're just like, I mean, I'm going to fucking quit this goddamn job, Mm -hmm. you know? And then stay there for another year. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) and then stay there another year, you know? And then your coworkers, you know, come and go. Mm-hmm. You know, how many coworkers can you like out of the jobs? How many like you do you still in contact with? It's kind of I don't speak to almost anyone that no. I've known in my previous job. Even people that like you were genuinely with friends them. with at that work, yeah. and you're like, you know, we totally need to stay in contact after this. You yeah. do for like maybe two months, and they're dead. Um, <laughs> so, um, but the Romans figured it out quick. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to pass out a little bit of watered down wine some bread we're gonna make them watch people kill each other in a fucking ring yeah for our fucking amusement because we like watching people do worse than us and treat it like entertainment football basketball same fucking thing how many times Mm -hmm. have you watched like my dad fucking watches football and like screams at the television break his motherfucking leg and i'm just like you're that's his career (laughs) and you're going to ruin it like you're wishing ruin upon a person yeah Yeah. just like when i watch uh if i when i watched uh, the addicts the intervention Mm -hmm. i want them to fail yeah because it makes me happy (laughs) (laughs) that might make me a fucking psychopath which is fine but But i can watch a charm show about more psychopaths down the road. <laughs> I could watch a show about a psychopath that goes into a kitchen and fixes restaurants. <laughs> that's just part of the human condition. That, but that is a but, perfect full circle there. But that's what we need. So we was watching sitcoms. Hey, mm-hmm. what's the new thing? And then you'd have the very special episode about crack or fucking, <laughs> or, you know, you know, molestation or Tom Hanks on fucking uh, that one show where he's drunk and he bitch smacks fucking Michael J. Fox because he's too drunk. <laughs> Girl, uh, uh, family ties. Family ties. Family yeah. ties. He bit, oh, Tom Hanks is an asshole in that show. <laughs> just, yeah. he, he puts one on him. He smacked that motherfucker back to the couch. <laughs> this is Basher Party era, Tom yeah. Hanks. Okay, well, you're talking but about like, escapism? We, it's escapism, so we have movies and television like sitcoms, but we need more. Mm-hmm. We, well, need, we need a lot more. Well, I feel like you led into something that's actually a really good and not to kind of like leave it on a down note but it kind of like wraps it up to a perfect point it's not down to watch people suffer well it, what i'm about to say is a little bit down when did we say this happened late, er, late 90s er, early, early 2000s early 2000s mm-hmm. what else extremely horrible happened in the early 2000s 9-11 9-11 mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden it felt like a few years after that is when we got the big boom of reality tv mm-hmm. everybody got desensitized by a lot of the like 9-11 and all the content that well, it followed goes back, it goes back to like uh, the early 70s uh when america had was losing the war in vietnam mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Why? Because we were seeing it on television. You know, Americans were seeing Vietnam. We were watching generals getting shot out the fucking sky. Mm-hmm. You know, so you're just like, oh, wait, maybe this is what a bad idea. And the hippie dream is basically over. Over. And then becomes ultra conservative in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Do Reagan twice. Do, do a bunch of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> but reality TV is 
the human experience. Now, yeah. because of the writer's strike, and it's and it's this is a, a pinpoint of it. Any reality TV before that was, hey, go do that. Mm-hmm. This one is, look hey, at us. Hey, hey, you guys pretend to fight. Yeah, pretend you're having a fight. You guys are best fucking friends. Pretend mm-hmm. you hate each other, and we'll do a whole fucking three episode on it mm-hmm. and then when you interview these people like no that's not fucking true like yeah no nah, we we had a disagreement about what was blue <laughs> yeah yeah and the producers heard it and went build it up bigger yeah i need you to walk over and punch him in the stomach yeah you all know? because you like blue better <laughs> yeah like it's it's, it's 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 scripted except it's not written by writers it's written by producers, producers. Mm-hmm. so you're you're getting trash you know you're not people who don't have the essence of storytelling and I would yeah. say the new version of that that we recently got because we got COVID and then lockdown and all that. People needed another big escape from reality at the time. Mm-hmm. And what became popular? A reality documentary series, Tiger King. Yeah. Yeah. Another look at how deplorable this group of people are. Yeah. But now it's just in the form of a documentary due to like the connections of everyone kind of being a lot more interested in true crime and all that stuff, and, too. And it's series based, too, because people consume series as mm-hmm. opposed to episodic. Because you can do it a little bit more in bites. Yeah. That could, you know, I would love to do another podcast, like the spinoff of this, of why we like watching people being murdered on television. Well, that could be a that murder show. Yeah, but that, we were talking about specific people. We're, I'm talking about our love and people's love of watching like City Confidential and Unsolved Mysteries and shit. Well, that that definitely could be a Couch Potatoes episode. Tell us we'll the Discord that. about why we, yeah. why we love suffering. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and on that note, look take, take a look in the episode description. There's going to be a link in there. Sign up for the Discord. Hang out with us in there. It's a lot more fun than Facebook. It's a lot more interactive. Yeah, and, talk with us about the fall of uh, humanity, and uh, starting with the uh, fall. Yeah. Yay. It's a pillar. A pillar. A pillar. <laughs> there there you go. Food and water. <laughs> <laughs> we need it. This is just the human condition. It's just the shit. Yeah. <laughs> We've started this episode of the Couch Potatoes. I've been Alex. This is Cap. And Morrison, do you have any sort of final thoughts <laughs> for I us? I have an idea. I want to combine like my 600 pound life and like intervention. Except they have to fight their way out of the room. <laughs> We're going to take away all your food. We're going to take away all your food. And, and you got your drugs. F- and you, and you got to work your way out of it. We're not cutting the door off the hinges. You know, you got to figure out a way out. And they're just like, I want my bacon wrapped Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs>